Hello everyone, we are back. It's been a little while, but we're here now for such a great cause. Today is the world premiere of the new Van Surf documentary called Breaking Boundaries, a surfboard drive in Trinidad and Tobago. Basically, it's just celebrating our good friend, Chris Dennis, who also is a professional surfer and all the amazing work that he does in his own country. He takes kids surfing and gives them a positive outlet within their own community and grows that positivity to create a family out of it. So we're gonna bring in a whole bunch of people here in this call. Let's get them in now and I'll introduce everybody. We got Chris. Hi guys. You. Patrick and Dane, my brothers. Hi. Layla Hurst, Lou Hawaii. And Dylan Grace, right here. Yes! I'm here. Hi everybody. Hi. Yes. Hey uh, Chris, so before we launch this thing and press play for everybody, do you have any kind of words to prepare the viewer for what they're about to see? This film is, was more than a board drive to us, and I hope it comes across like that. This film really represented hopes and dreams for us, and I hope it shines through. Dude, Rad. Well, when we were down there, we could tell that what you embody is incredibly genuine and pure, and I think it's just a great role model to have, not only in your own community, but globally. So I'm excited for everybody, wherever you are, tune in, turn the volume up, Let's go live right now. If there's just one surfboard that could help just one kid, it would make all the difference in the world. The Republic of Trinidad and Tobago lies just off the coast of northeastern Venezuela. Trinidad and Tobago is one of the wealthiest nations in the Caribbean. Trinidad and Tobago's economy has been characterized by a heavy dependency on oil and gas production. Trinidad's many ports and harbors are ideal for traffickers. Police say that drug smugglers are also moving firearms into the country. The murder toll for 2018 is now 500 after the body of a man was discovered in Port of Spain with gunshot wounds. We have now reached a situation where we need youth centers in different communities to provide a safe and structured environment for at-risk youth. Trinidad Tobago has two very different sides. On one end, you have a beautiful country that's filled with beautiful beaches and great people. On the other side, there's like a lot of darkness also, a lot of crime, a lot of poverty, a lot of suffering. Surfing has literally been one of the biggest motivational tool for kids on the coast in Trinidad and Tobago. It offers youths a space where they could go get creative. They have an opportunity to also push themselves and experience something different. Some of y'all are super young and I know opportunities are really hard. Surfing was my dream and it has got me. It has literally given me everything I have in my life. Surfing is literally saving many a youth lives in Trinidad and Tobago. We are in Balandra. This here 
is where I do a lot of the work with the kids, where we repair all the boards and where I do a lot of mentorship. I'm cut around, but not exact. I'm coming. Yeah, right here. Yes, I'm very careful. Back then, life in Trinidad was much more rural. I grew up without any electricity or running water. We would live off the land, we would fish, and we would dive. Growing up here was special times. It gave me a lot of mental toughness. I lived on the coast, and on the coast you will see people of means having their beach houses, and they would go home to eat chocolate cake, and I would stay on the beach to eat dry coconuts. The first time I saw surfing, I was standing at the cliff in the back of my house, and I saw these two guys get out into the ocean, and I saw one of them took off on a wave. And I was just transfixed, like I never saw anything like that in my whole life. And I would go look every afternoon, every chance that I get to see if there was another surfer. And I didn't see much of it until I was 15. That's when I started. But that image stayed with me. And my cousin, he somehow got a surfboard. I spent a year in the back of the house surfing. I never thought about anything else. And then someone told me, hey, there's a surfing competition. I was just fascinated. There is surfing competitions? Really? Riding waves? You can compete doing that? I literally showed up at the contest. I didn't even know you had to wear like a rash guard. They said, Chris Dennis, you're in red over the loudspeakers. And I was like, I don't have a red shirt and I started asking everybody on the beach, do you have a red shirt to lend me? You have a red shirt to lend me? It, it, was, it was classic, but I somehow won. <laughs> and it kind of just steamrolled from there. I got to travel a lot and I got to compete and meet people on the road. And the education I've gotten through surfing and traveling you know, you learn things that no college, no university, no school could teach you. Yeah, there were a lot of good times. Of course, there were a lot of hard times and they were just all experiences that embodied living. I probably met Chris 12 years ago. <laughs> we were in Virginia Beach and we were hanging with Dylan Graves. The waves are super tiny, but we're gonna go surf along the jetty. And Dylan's like, hey man, my buddy Chris Dennis is coming from Trinidad. He's gonna serve with us. He's in the contest. And I was like, what? There's waves in Trinidad? Where? I don't even know where that is. And I couldn't believe there was a pro server from there. And Chris came down just like a fired up grommet and he had lightning in a bottle, you know, and he was just on every wave coming in all these peaks. And we hit it off right away. He's just a full character. After competing and traveling and coming from such a rural area, it's always a cultural shock when you, you travel. And I started to see things when I was on the road that really affected the way I think. I started to realize that my community was in trouble in terms of the social problems we were having. At first it started where I was just teaching one or two boys to surf. It wasn't anything planned. And then as time go along, I started realizing that young youths, you know, there's issues in the homes, like a lot of poverty, a lot of like dropping out of primary school and abuse and just a lot of heavy situations. Then I started just talking to them because my experiences on the road kind of give me a little bit of knowledge where I can say something that would pertain to dreaming big, you know, and before I knew it, I had like 18 boys at a time and surfing was the platform where I would have reached them. Then I realized, hey, you know, some of them can't write, some of them can't 
formulate proper sentences. And then I realized, shoot, I have a lot of surf magazines. I can teach them to read one or two words in a magazine because I guess you've got to get a bit creative. You know, some people are not interested in algebra and that's how it kind of took off. If you're getting educated from a surfing magazine, if you're learning to read from a surfing magazine, that's a real good thing. Education is very important. So what I've been doing is picking them up in, in their reading as, you know, trying to do it in an interesting way. I met Chris when I was around seven years old. And I was watching people pass on surfboards and I was asking, could I get a ride? People would pass me straight, some would watch me and they would go about the business. And as one day I asked, I asked Chris and he took me out and I fell in love with it. When I was younger, Chris, he was like a life mentor based because when I had no books or any money to go to school, he would like buy all and send me to school and keep me in the right track. And I'm grateful for that. Anybody with any broken boards or, or just whatever hand-me-down things, leashes, wax and stuff is, is welcome. So far, a few surfers have been generous offering some equipment and stuff and you know the surfing has grown tremendously on some of the hand-me-down boards and we don't have like a lot of equipment so equipment is a little bit of a challenge right now. So the Positive Vibe Warriors Foundation was started in 2012 with my brothers and I. We just had a common passion for the ocean. Everything has provided us in our life and we really wanted to continue sharing that with the next generation. So we established support for youth water safety programs and really trying to get behind emerging surf cultures. One of the many initiatives we established was the surfboard drive. We just kind of had this thought that maybe people would have old surfboards in their garage that they're not using anymore and, and pass it forward to someone who may not have access to the equipment to allow them to enjoy the ocean. So it's been incredible to see the journey. We went to Jamaica. Our second board drive was for South Africa, and now here we are at our third in Trinidad and Tobago. and we're ready to load it up. Positive Vibe Warriors in the house, advanced surf. And uh, yeah, we're raising some surfboards for the kids down in Trinidad, Tobago. We'll be here from three to six. Come say hi, share some stoke. You guys are an epic community and uh, can't wait to hang out. So, see you in a bit. This project was a great meeting of the minds. And it's been a series of hands that has touched, whether people all over the East Coast or the West Coast donated boards. And that to me is really the most awesome thing about the board drive, was that it really just was a tool to facilitate a vision from an inspired member of the community to help give back to others within the community that share the same experiences that he had growing up. And that's a really valuable cause because having the boards is one thing, but the boards are only a vehicle for someone to access the learning tools of the ocean. So it's step one. It really takes a member like Chris in the community to put the boards in use. And uh, it's been a great thing to see it all come together here. I have a list of names from all the villages. And what I'm doing, because I know everyone, I have a really good idea of what they would like. So I'm basically sorting through all the boards, hand-picking basically individually each board for every person. No, I'm not on vacation. I'm actually on the northeast coast of Trinidad for a special assignment. Come on. This is a huge week for Trinidad and Tobago surfing. There are several great initiatives that are happening not limited to the distribution of 200 surfboards. That's a remarkable time for surfing in TNT. It's huge. 
One of the biggest problems we've had in Trinidad and Tobago was access to equipment and um, you know thanks to Vans, the surf brand and the Positive Vibes Warriors Foundation from California we've done a collaboration and they were able to collect over 200 surfboards on the on the east and west coast of America. Surfing is growing. It's growing quickly in Trinidad and a lot of those boards will be used to um, also introduce new people to the sport. Time for charging. We're here. First day surfing. Trinidad. The guys just cut their boards and just immediately just couldn't contain themselves. Just ran to the water and started riding waves. It's just so natural. When you're seeing that's just amazing. <laughs> First day surfing. Gotta love it. I feel like a bird in the sky. I feel I'm like a bird in the water. <laughs> I end up dropping in and I feel it, how the wave curving in and how it pulling back. When I first started working on this project, the board drive, I literally had people laugh at me. They thought I was crazy. And we being a little dot in the Caribbean, I started thinking, why would these big international athletes, why would they want to come to my island? For me personally, you know, I got really, um, I got really emotional because when I was growing up, we had nothing. And um, surfing was an escape. The board drive was in a way, I didn't want the kids to go through what I went through. The surfboards, it's more than surfboards. It's more than a board drive to us. You know, it's a human thing. If we share and really care for each other, a lot of our problems will be solvable. So it means the world. I love the fact that we met Chris at a time when he was doing the tour, struggling to make it, and then coming back here, seeing the kids that he's working with, and I'm so proud of Chris for all he's done here for the kids. The board drive I'll start off with, it created a platform for where youths can now have access to equipment. Before we would be scrambling for surfboards, then came the board drive and we just had this influx of equipment and somebody came up to me and told me in one of the communities up on the north coast, they say there's been no youths hanging around on the blocks. When you look out into the ocean, they're all out there. And in my opinion, it's been the single most important thing as far as our sport is concerned, surfing, to happen in Trinidad and Tobago. You know, the board drive has been one of the most positive things that I have seen in my lifetime. The board drive 
it has opened also personally many other avenues, you know, from me setting up an NGO, Waves for Hope, to getting the opportunity to do a course in surf therapy with Waves for Change, an organization out of South Africa. I came back even more inspired to turn that, and now having the tools of structure and having more knowledge about therapy and stuff has just, you know, opened these doors for me that I could never imagine. We're just going to give it right up for my brother Chris Dennis right there. That was insane. Come on, how special was that movie? I'm gonna bring everybody back into this call. If you're just tuning in now, we just watched Breaking Boundaries, a surfboard drive for Trinidad and Tobago. And we're about to have a Q&A with the guy sitting next to me, Dylan Graves, my two brothers, Patrick and Dane Gadowskis, Layla Hurst from Hawaii, and of course, the man of the hour, Chris Dennis. You. What's up, everyone? <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Hey, so, you know, to kick off the q and I was thinking that to give a little context from our side before we dive into the amazing work that you're doing, Chris, I was going to hit up Pat and see if he would give us a little bit of a backstory on how the concept of a surfboard drive started in our life. Yeah, thank you, Tanner. Um, yeah, my brothers and for anyone watching, uh, the three of us, we have a foundation called the Positive Vibe Warriors Foundation. Um, and it, it evolved from a really organic place of just wanting to help people with, with need, you know, like, uh, serving something that's given us a lot in our, in our lifetimes, being able to experience different cultures, travel the world. And, and I think, you know, to kind of parlay to the, the film, to be able to break boundaries, using surfing as a vehicle to bring people together in the ocean. So, um, yeah, we, you know, we started, it was a long time ago. You guys had done a trip down to Jamaica, uh, with the Jamnesia boys, with Billy Wilmot and the whole crew. And, and you guys saw a need there for, for surfboards. They didn't have surfing equipment due to tariffs coming into the Caribbean and really limited supplies. And, and it started right there where you guys came home. I remember I was, I was on the road somewhere and he came home and said, Oh my God, Billy asked us like, how could we get boards down there? So the next generation could be able to enter into the water space and be, you know, use surfing as a healthy outlet. And, uh, so yeah, we just, I guess we just cultivated the idea. Like, why don't we just ask a few people if we can get any extra boards like laying around their house, you know, and, in a community like California, there's a lot of ability to have surf equipment. A lot of people have excess surf equipment. So, um, yeah, it started there. We collected and, you know, we ended up learning a lot about shipping and the whole nine of drive, doing a board drive. And, it, you know, after one month, we came up with about 250 boards that were able to go down to um, to Jamaica. And, and that was the beginning of a really cool ripple effect and an energy that was starting to happen where, surfing became you know an energy in jamaica and here actually several years later these guys are looking to get into the olympics and they're at the level of pushing onto a, a global stage in their surfing presence so it's really exciting um and that's kind of yeah where it started i mean tanner maybe you want to chime in on i think it's really cool because you're bringing up billy wilmot and it, it highlights like having a pillar in the community and you know then you're able to access that specific community with great intentions of bringing the boards Realistically, Dylan sitting to my left right now is a major conduit of Chris Dennis and the surfboard connection. So Dee, I don't know, can you give us a little story of, you grew up with Chris, right? Yeah, so Chris came and stayed at our house, was it in 2000, Chris? Was that the year that yes. he came and stayed with us? Or was yeah. it? First I started visiting, yeah. visiting and then I, I moved in. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we had Chris, um, you got in touch with my mom, who's a surf rep, uh, Barbara Graves in Puerto Rico. And I met her at the surf oh, wow. expo. Yes. I was, I was looking for sponsors at the time. And I, yeah, I just happened to meet your mom who knew a friend of mine. And she was like, why don't you come to Puerto Rico? Chris came down and stayed with us that year and every year for a couple years after that. Um, you ended up coming and competing in Puerto Rico um, at various surf events that that were happening at the time. And yeah, we obviously became really close. And 
yeah, Chris was super driven and kind of an awesome role model for me to have like someone like Chris come and stay with us and, and pretty much become part of the, you know, his family. He was like another brother in the house and to see, you know, to hear his story and where he came from and, you know, him seeing the opportunity that we had in Puerto Rico shined a lot of light for us, um, me and my brother as young adults, like aspiring to be anything we could in the sport of surfing. We had sponsors at the time and Chris is like, man, you guys are so lucky. We got free surfboards. He's like, I can't even tell you and stress this enough. Like, that's the dream, you know? And so from a very young age, we had uh, just a really cool kind of, you know, well, relationship with Chris and how that ended up kind of forming me and my brother as, you know, as we kind of became adults was like so special. And so, yeah, you know, through the years, we, we all were trying to do what we could do. Um, you know, obviously Chris had, uh, it was a lot hard. It's a lot harder for Chris, you know, coming from Trinidad and Tobago, there's not all the resources that we have even on Puerto Rico, from Puerto Rico to the States, you know, and then from the States to Trinidad and Tobago, it's like, you know, there's levels, you know, leaps and bounds of what you have to do to actually, you know, even traveling for Chris was such a hard thing dealing with visas. And there was just, he just had it, he did have it, you know, a lot, a lot tougher. So, um, yeah, it was, it was, you know, over the years of, of different stuff, uh, you know, like me getting the opportunities I got and us staying in touch after, you know, our trip to Jamaica, I think I talked to you, you're like the first person I talked to when I got back from Jamaica and I, you know, kind of told you about the trip. And then, you know, these guys had the idea of the board drive in Jamaica and you're like, man that's exactly what we need here. Can we like, what do we need? What do I need to do to help like make this happen? And we stayed in touch and, you know, as the idea kind of got traction and things were happening, we we're able to kind of, you know, bring that to Trinidad and Tobago next. So when they were looking uh, for another location, you know, and, and trying to feel out where, you know, the next board drive could be, I was like, Trinidad and Tobago, Chris Dennis, please now. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I put, I think I put Dane in touch with Chris and then, you know, that's basically breaking boundaries. Like Dane took the, you know, basically passed the torch to Dane and from there on, you guys just absolutely killed it, organized an incredible team to go down there and do exactly the same thing as, as uh, we did in Jamaica. And it was just so cool for me to see that and to connect with a friend like Chris, you know, a brother like Chris and it through surfing through this platform that these guys created was just like such a rad dream come true, full circle, just euphoric moment for me, you know, just kind of looking back is, you know, knowing Chris well and seeing that and seeing everything that was happening. It was just like, I got chicken skin right now, even thinking about it. To go to your point, um, if the board drive was supposed to be a, a small thing, you, we were thinking about you coming to visit me and you were going to do just right. like a few board bags, like maybe two board bags. And that's kind of how, you know, it evolved from, from just like maybe four boards or five boards to what happened next was like a 40 foot container. Like the love that was felt was just, I mean, you know, as soon as the idea, you know, that idea, like you're saying, it started really small and even the original one and to see what actually happens once you have a platform for people to give to, it's like, it's insane. With the board drive, Dano, logistically, because I was there with you on the East Coast for some of those, but you were communicating with Chris the whole time. Talk to, talk to us a little bit about what went on behind the scenes and how much love individually was passed through surfboards for this project. Yeah, it, the, it's been such a fantastic learning um, experience doing these board drives and um, just having the opportunity, like Dylan just mentioned, for people to get involved and, and help support other people at the end of the day is the most significant thing. And there's a lot of good people out there that really want to 
contribute to the greater energy and support the ecosystem and other people out there. So kind of using the surfboard as like a symbol for our authentic, you know, connection, you know, we're surfers. So it just felt really good. And, you know, big shout out to Vans for supporting it and connecting us with the retailers because all of these boards were individually donated up and down the West Coast and up and down the East Coast. So we'd hang out at these retail stores and just kick it all day. When you can communicate with the people who are donating, individual people who want to know where it's going, who it's gonna affect, and then you get to see it actually take hold in Trinidad. When you go to hang out with the kids and the communities where we were with Chris, and there were some extreme challenges that those, those communities are facing. Um, and to see the impact um, of not only the surfboard as a vehicle to go surfing, but more as like an aspect of a therapeutic outlet, an opportunity to communicate with one another, to open up their emotions, what they're experiencing, and know that people love them too, because people donated these boards for them. Mm -hmm. So that was a really special opportunity to, to experience something like that. And uh, yeah, so we went Bunger Sable Surf Shop in New York. Heritage Surf Shop, Barrier Surf Shop, Coastal Edge on the East Coast, Thalia, San Diego, Proof Lab, and Jax on the West Coast. So, I mean, it's a team effort yeah. from the individual to the retail store to, to the companies that we are working with and connecting with Chris and then in his community. And it really was a significant team effort. And I think that really made it so special. Like everyone felt connected and involved and a part of the process. I love to going to the beach and seeing the boards. Cause that day, Chris, remember you loaded up the two trucks with all the boards and we just did the drive. Like, Hey, we're coming to your camp. Like let's get surfing. How fun was that day? That was extremely special. I, I hope you realize that those, like a lot of the kids that I was their first time actually surfing huh? and and like even holding a surfboard it was extremely special and, and heartwarming because i've spent a lot of time on these coasts and, and surfing a lot of the sports and uh sometimes you're just like giving a kid a ride on a board and and you're seeing you know the joy and the stoke on, on his or her face and then to see them with their own boards and and stuff it was just like that day those moments the time that we got you guys got to spend with us in trinidad let me tell you they were extremely special ones that today we are still talking about there's still effects positive effects of you guys being there and being such inspiration to to us you know it's it was a obviously it's the first time one of the questions i had was why would pro surfers want to come to our tiny island? You know, what would be a reason? You know, I mean, yeah, we, we have some waves and stuff, but for, for people to take the time out of their, their busy schedule and to come contribute to such an impactful thing on a little dot somewhere in the world, you know, obviously it was special. To kind of come back to that point was that I think it, it comes back to sort of what Dane's saying is that what you're doing is so pure and so from the heart and genuine that for us as a team, it was like, you know, we're talking to Dylan, to Dane, Layla comes on the trip. We're just calling and like, Hey, what do you guys think? What Chris is doing is amazing. And it was just like, Oh, absolutely. And that was the same on the surfboard drives. People were coming, hearing about what you were doing down in Trinidad and then bringing more boards. They were like, oh my gosh, calling their friend further down the state in New Jersey. Like, you guys gotta go to Heritage and drop off your boards. Like, I think you set such a cool example of uh, just doing it really from your heart. And we could tell when we were there, the connection that you have with the community. But I, I mean, Layla, what did you think? That must've been a pretty cool trip for you. Yeah, um, that was really cool. Cause I've always, I mean, I've always been so inspired by everything that you guys good is and Dylan you guys do with these board drives and I was like how does this even work and I remember uh your first one that you did I was just like these guys are crazy I don't even understand how this is gonna happen and then it happened and it was freaking amazing and um Karina and I went <laughs> we got there and met Chris and um it was just like 
mind blowing, eye opening. Karina was like crying the whole time the first time that we um, went surfing with the kids, and it was just um, it's just incredible what you guys do and what Chris what you did and it it's just um really inspiring to all of us team riders and surfers and everybody in the community. Leila, I must say to yeah. you that you and Karina, you guys you guys inspired also quite a few girls in our community, huh? Especially the younger ones that you had the the chance to work with while you were there. Like a lot of inspiration because surfing to an extent in in trinidad there's not a lot of girls we are still in a certain time in in trinidad we're getting out of that where women and girls are still looked at at a at, in a particular way and surfing was one of those things where for young girls on the coast where i'm from it's kind of like oh well that's a guy's sport you know what i mean after the after that trip in particular girls seeing like another girl surfing we don't have a lot of women surfers in trinidad and the ones we do they are, are absolute pioneers but you guys really fostered an inspiration you and karina both you left a wake of inspiration in your part when you when you left where girls can actually you know, they can relate to, which I felt is something important that I should point out because I haven't spoken to you in so long. I just wanted to tell you that. So thank you. That's um, so cool. Yeah, it was cool. Uh, I feel like somehow girl, like all the little girls just uh, kind of, they wanted to be with Karina and I, and we at one point had like three girls on, on, we were like, stacking them on we had like four girls on the board on on this long board and we were pushing them in and yeah it was really cool and um i think also that night after we surfed and, and we had uh, the barbecue thing um that was really cool too because they got to, we all got to hang out and connect with the girls on a deeper level that was away from the beach and talk story and and get to know them too Chris, take us to now, because you're talking about the effect that Layla and Karina had on the women's side. How is the surf community doing with the influx of surfboards and kind of what are you seeing? Has there been a change on the islands? Well, obviously, yes, there has been a change there, especially in my community. There's been more people obviously surfing and that sort of stuff. Um, as far as where we are, now I'm the co-founder of an NGO, my wife and I, um, called Waves for Hope. And we fuse surfing with therapy, mental a mental health program. We have a full curriculum and stuff. And we run this program every Saturday. And um, the response, of course, has been incredible. Because of the board drive, we have been able to have access obviously to equipment to, to reach a, a lot of youths. Obviously the impact has been a hugely and massively um, positive one. It's really cool, it's, it's growing, huh? Do you see it becoming bigger and bigger? Like what would be your dream as the years come forward? So I'm kind of known as being a dreamer. My dream is to have these programs on both islands, Trinidad and Tobago, up in almost every community. My dreams and my wife, we, our, we both dream of a day where our programs and, and surfing, we can spread that love throughout every community. As for specific things, we're working on a scholarship fund because a lot of youths uh inclined academically but they don't necessarily have the financial support so our dream is to have a scholarship fund where we can help these youths we are hoping to pretty soon to start off with a homework center but it's more than just a center it's a place where youths can come to do their homework to find some quiet to share, to talk, 
stories. Um, and that's some of the things that we have um, implementing. We're also um, currently um, in the process of also having a skate park in our community as part of our program. And yeah, it the list goes on and <laughs> on. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a dreamer. <laughs> Full scale dreamer. I love it. I mean, that sounds like... Well, you have to be yeah. too. I mean, that's why things like this have happened like yeah. because of you know you and never giving up on on things you know like that things have come to fruition yes and, and touching on what you're saying dylan you, we've got to realize that we are stronger together i mean as a community and you never really do anything by yourself you might feel alone sometimes but you never really accomplish anything by yourself and um, the board drive, bringing it back to the board drive, I mean, that was just the biggest catalyst to, it's one thing to have a board drive, but it's quite another thing, communicating and, and touching lives. Because like I mentioned earlier, and I think I mentioned this in the film as well, these things are more than just board drives and, and giving out surfboards and that sort of thing you're really connecting with people and you're you are changing lives for me surfing changed my life surfing saved me and i i wanted to pass that on to to youths and, and kids and i wanted a platform where the sport itself can help people and the board drive created that for us. So Chris, as people watch this now, and we're here, I mean, I'm feeling super inspired. I'm sure everybody's feeling very inspired. What's the best way for somebody to stay in touch with your journey down there? Is it following Ways for Hope? How could somebody help you continue to grow what you're doing, which is so amazing? Well, there are many ways. Obviously, you can go, you can support the film. You can go to our website, waysforhope.org um, you will see many ways but also I think besides myself these board drives are important to communities around the world it's more than surfing and people should support initiatives like this like they have had and we're so grateful I think reaching out to the Positive Vibes Warriors and supporting because you guys are also going to carry on into other communities, other countries. There are many people like us around the world, like myself, like you guys around the world, who are positively inclined to doing good things and making sure it reaches and it touches lives. So you, I think it's important just to support these initiatives. That's insane. Yeah, you're the, the man. Uh, that was really well said, Chris. Yeah, I, man. Wow. <laughs> thank you for this live showing and just all the wisdom and what you're doing, Chris. I think if people are watching now, you should feel comfortable knowing that this movie is going to always be on the band's YouTube so you can check back in and get re-inspired on this. And thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dylan, Patrick, Dane, Layla, Chris. Again, thank you for everything that you do because you're leading by example. You're, you're making positive changes in your community. And I think for us right now, what a great example. And it, you're lifting us all up. So this was a really cool day. And thank you for making the time all the way down there in Trinidad. Thank you. I'd, I'd also like to, to do a couple of thank yous because I think this is a good platform to do it. To everybody who has contributed Thank you so much to everyone, every single person who have gone into a surf shop and, and contributed a board. You guys have changed and saved lives in, in the most unique and special way. I'd also like to thank Vans for their belief in these programs and please continue. I'd also like to there's so many people, but I just must shout out a couple people. And my wife is one of them. She's been by my side throughout all of this and has also been an inspiration to me. Um, 
I can go on and on, but just thank you to anybody who has been involved in, in this program and please continue being an inspiration. So thank you. Yes. And, yeah, Chris. and again, too, to let everybody know, if you're still watching, stay in touch. Waves for Hope, wonderful organization. You can follow us at Positive Vibe Warriors Foundation. The world's, it's a small place. We're all pretty connected and we're trying to help each other out. So that's a great way to do it. So, all right, you guys. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Yeah.